Good morning, team. Welcome to Sim Technologies. And today I'm your instructor for the this uh, .NET Real Time project. I know that few of you know .NET, few of you maybe don't know .NET, and lot of things maybe you are working in a company or you may or not working in a company. Lot of things maybe happen to you. But in today's uh, like class, we are going to discuss about like uh, why we are talking about real time project and why this .NET is more uh, demanding in the market, especially .NET Core. I'm not talking about the .NET framework. I'm not talking about the MVC. I'm just specifically talking about .NET Web API, all these things. Before going into that and discuss the like uh, how the .NET work and how the things will be work and what is the things we are going to provide by the from the uh, technologies, first we have to understand the basic concept of a web application. It may be any application, not web. It may be mobile application, web application, like suppose you are uh, creating application for a TV, any application, how the application works. I know that a few of you know that, but let me give a basic introduction to a web application or any application. Then we'll discuss about the importance of our API layer and we'll do, going to going further discuss about why API layer is developed. We are going to develop using the, using the .NET. Let me do something, guys. Let me draw some uh, like um, uh, structure here, and you are going to understand the importance of application. Suppose you are developing any application. Any application means I'm going to focus on two applications. One is web, another one is suppose mobile. As of now, we mostly working on this kind of application, right? Any application. Now, if you see, just example, take and take an example of Swiggy. Because I know that day by day, you people are using the Swiggy app or someone is using, using the Swiggy web app. The same Swiggy can be accessed by mobile as well as your uh, web browser. Now let's see the basic of our Swiggy application, how the application is going to work. Then we understand the further things. Like any application in this world, the first entry point is your UI. UI means user interface. Without a mobile or without a browser, how you can go and access application? Any application, right? It may be Swiggy, it may be Zomato, it may be anything. First part you have to understand, the first entry point of application is our UI. UI stands for user interface, okay? User interface or UI. Any application without UI, there is no existence of an application. That must be one at least UI for an application. But UI is only for display the content and is only used for display the data, whatever you have. UI don't store any data, just a view of your data or just a representation of your data. For that reason, user interface is developed totally separately. But you know that data is the main part of all the applications. If you're going to develop any application, data is the main part. For that reason, we are going to use a database for that. You know that for each and every application, we are going to use a concept called database. Right? Database can be anything. Like suppose in your academic, you learn RDMS, or you maybe now you want to heard about the NoSQL. It may be any database, doesn't matter. But you know that UI for view part, database for the storing part, to store the data or get the data, we are using database. But UI to database, we cannot direct interact. Why, guys? Because UI can be anything. UI can be your mobile, UB can be your web, UB can be anything. We are not going to store direct data into your device because if you're going to store the data into your device, then just imagine day by day data is going to increase, right? We are not going to store the data into client machine. We are going to store the data in a distributed system. That is called the cloud or anywhere. That will be common for everyone. Now, but for the interaction between the UI to database, because finally we have to get, get finally we have to get the data, right? For that reason, we require another layer. That layer is called as a UI layer, that is called as the API layer. Or this people are calling as a server, or people are calling as the API. Now you can see that from UI to database, we cannot go directly. Why? Because 
if anyone can access the database, then anyone can change the data. Just imagine you order something and I can go and cancel the order. In this case, what happened guys? We must have to maintain the security. We may, must have to maintain the authentication of our application. For that reason, we required a intermediate layer that is called a server or API. Okay, means your UI is going to send the request to your server. Then your server is going to send the request to database. Same to same, your database is going to get the response from the database to server. And again, your server is going to give the response to your UI. This is the way the entire application is work. If you go to develop any application in this world, this is the basic structure of all the application. Anywhere you develop mobile, develop web, any TV also, this is the same thing. Maybe you are going to change. Maybe sometime you are using web, sometime you are using mobile, sometime you are using TV, or sometime using your uh, suppose watch. But the UI can be changed. But these two parts always be constant. Okay, this is the way it's going to work. Now let's understand why now all the people are talking about the API. But we have, before that, we have to understand without API, because if you go to like um, 10 years, 15 years back, there is no concept of an API was there. That time, how the application development was happening and how this is going to be like a um, problem for us to future enhancement that API got introduced. I hope you will understand the basic principle of an application. We'll back here and discuss about other, other things. But as of now, just understand, we are going to focus on the server part or API part. Now let's discuss. Now guys, initial days, when like if you go to 10 to 15 years back, there is an application called, there is a, any application going to develop, there is a concept called monolithic. Let's understand what is monolithic. Right? Monolithic means what? If you see our diagram, right? In this diagram, as I said, UI and server and database, each are the three different, 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 different applications. But before that, what happened, guys? Your UI means your UI and your API. API means your logic. Okay, your logic, it both are belongs to one part only. Means if you see the see, if you see any application. All the application, as I explained here, UI is different, API is different. But previously, these two are belongs to one group only. Okay, means one application is going to both use the UI as well as your API. In this case, guys, what will happen if anything going to be changed in the UI? Or necessary, you are going to upload, you are going to deploy your API or your server code. If anything going to change in this, this part, means the server part, you are going to unnecessarily going to upload the UI part. Just imagine, you, suppose some logic got failed, some something going to be add. In the logic change also, you are going to upload the UI. From the UI change also, going to upload the logic. This is the problem happen in the case of monolithic application. Mono means everything is tightly coupled, tightly binding. Everything is tightly coupled. Now, day by day, day by day, what happened? Now, software evolution is happening. Now, we are going to use the concept called microservice. Now, what is a microservice and what is called a loose coupling architecture? Now, loosely coupling architecture, guys, means or microservice means your UI is a different, your logic will be different, and anyhow, database is always be different, right? The database is always different. Everywhere you will go, you will find that nowadays, suppose you are a UI developer, okay? Suppose you know Angular or you know React everything. Then you will know further about what is about the API. Suppose I am a uh, API developer. I don't care about what UI is going to take care. I'm just only going to focus on my part. Nowadays, guys, what happened? All the application is going to work in this way. The UI will be different layer, logic will be different layer, database will be different layer. Now let's go understand what is the benefit of using the UI in different layer and logic will be different layer. Then only we'll go and discuss about more into logic. 
as i told if you are a ui developer and you are not going to focus on your uh, api part you are go only going to develop the ui stuff if i am a api developer you all are api developer that's the reason is required the that is a different application that you pretty much understand right but what is the use of the microservice why microservice uh, if you go and see there everyone in the job description they are saying that you have knowledge on microservice you must have to know the api why they are talking about the microservice and all these things guys i'll go and discuss the same thing using some example okay now for the demo demonstration let me open the swiggy because we are going in our project we are going to create a swiggy app and in the swiggy app i'm going to show you the all these things okay now you know that every day you are ordering the item from swiggy from your mobile also if someone going to use the swiggy.com also you can go to order from there it's up to you you can see that guys okay first of all based on the location because you know you have to choose your location what location going to do that here you have to enter your area code or you are going to enter something that is going to call and based on that it's going to display your food or best display restaurant based on your things okay now, let's understand please in this case suppose i have choose hyderabad okay in hyderabad if you going to open the same thing into a mobile also you can able to see the same restaurant into your application right same same to same restaurant whatever is available you can also going to see the same output into your mobile now there is a question guys okay for web application is the develop separate code or for the mobile application they develop the separate code yes guys for the ui part for the ui part this is a different maybe they develop the web application because swiggy is developed the web application using the react and using the react the web ui the web part is developing the react and the mobile part they may be using the android and ios okay android and ios a different different platform the different 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 things the ui will be always be different for different different device suppose you are using web it will different language for mobile it's different language for tv different language it's totally depend upon the company but if you see the experience guys now you can see here if you open the same thing into a mobile we can now able to see the same restaurant is available into your into your mobile now let's discuss a little bit in depth how this is happening is for the web they are developing the separate application and for the uh, like uh, for the mobile they are developing separate application let us understand that part okay just understand the problem on monolithic for monolithic as i told every ui and logic will be tightly coupled means from the ui side you are going to write a logic for the for if the ui got changed then you are going to write the different logic just imagine if i am developing a mobile application then i have to write the same code for ui and logic logic means our api and for the web also i am going to write the same ui another ui and another logic let's understand guys nowadays there is no ui will be anything it should be mobile tablet tv everything watch are you going to write for each and every code for each and every device no this is not going to be ideal way maybe you can develop the ui the logic may be always same right logic means if i are going to put the 5 triple zero 8 for the address here i will get all this restaurant this restaurant is be available for my mobile as well as web as well as my tablet anywhere going to display same thing right now guys the problem is we cannot go and write the same logic for different 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 devices or different 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 platform for that reason we need to segregate or we need to separate the logic layer from this our application that's the reason we are going to use the logic as a separate thing if logic is if you're going to separate the logic now it is a it's a micro why micro is there and why service there we're going to discuss the micro service is, is combination of micro plus service now let's understand what is a micro then we'll understand what is a service guys micro means you know that if there is a big things you are going to divide into multiple parts one 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 chunk is called micro just imagine in our case previously our ui and our logic logic means i'm talking about the programming logic is totally bind with the same part 
then what i what we did then we have created ui as a separate separate things and plus and logic is a separate thing we did totally separate the two things now in this case this is the whole application this whole application divided into two multiple chunks now this ui is a one microservice and this this logic also a another microservice got it and micro means this is the divide of the entire application to small small chunk and service means service means guys okay service means guys who is going to give you service right now in this case now ui is going to do the service of ui logic is going to do the use of the logic now guys it's pretty much simple right if you're going to divide a entire application to multiple chunks then it called as microservice and each and every chunk is one 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 microservice now let's understand okay okay we are talking about microservice as of now then what is the benefit now let's guys understand a little bit benefit here now as you understand we divided the entire application into two part one is ui is another application and logic is another application suppose if you know if you don't know react you no need to touch with ui if you don't know the logic you you if you don't know the c sharp or you don't know any other language you no need to touch with logic you only going to focus on on your part then first definition is do your work part you know first principle of a microservice is do your work what you know suppose you are good into ui you just work into ui if you are good into logic or api part you work on the api part don't think okay if i don't know ui then i cannot go and write a log uh, i cannot develop the ui don't know if you don't know that is okay if you know logic part you're going to work on logic part that's the reason you have to do your first principle of your microservices do your work what you know okay just imagine guys you know logic part now today we are not going to discuss the ui part we are only going to focus about our logic part suppose you know logic now in the logic it's not a whole logic right? because we are discussing we can divide your application in a multiple way now let's discuss about all these things now guys here seeing that if i going to call, enter this ip or enter this location i can able to see all this restaurant now same restaurant can be displayed in mobile for that reason we have to create a application and that application is going to display list of restaurant okay list of restaurant to our application now for that reason we are going to create a logic right now logic is going to divide into multiple part first part is guys now, suppose in a case our logic suppose we are developing the swiggy application first application our first uh, microservice is based on location display restaurant display restaurant now if i going to change the location now suppose let me enter suppose um 50038 you can see that suddenly all the restaurant got changed now guys this is called the macro service now just imagine in this way in this way we are going to create a separate application which application work is only if the based on the location is going to give you the list of the restaurant right now second part just see that how we are dividing the application multiple part now after that okay if you are going to click a click a restaurant now i can able to see the list of the list of the items here just imagine first microservice is going to display you list of our okay list of just again let me little bit scroll this one the first part you can see that is based on the location it's going to display a list of location list of restaurant now once you're going to click on the restaurant you can able to see okay see list of menus okay list of menus now can you understand here this is one microservice this is one microservice then uh, you will ask me question why we are creating multiple because as i told ui into microservice and logic is a microservice they can i again i am converting this logic as a one microservice and this one microservice now guys let me understand suppose you can able to see list of restaurant here okay 
but after you click this one what happening we are displaying the another data where we can getting the list of the menus but you guys know that these menus okay these menus is purely de depend upon the restaurant right you can display the best of the location you can display the restaurant but the menu of the restaurant is purely depend upon the restaurant suppose suppose um, the Raghavendra restaurant is there all the menu they need to set for that reason the setting of the menu and the update of the menu is going to happen in a different way if one if any problem into the set of the menu is not going to affect the location display the display of the restaurant just imagine suppose some of the region this list of the menu is not working in this case is not going to affect the first stage but in case of monolithic application if one logic is got failed your entire application is going to be failed that's the reason guys microservice is helpful to develop the loosely coupling application if one part is going to down another part is going to be up if another part is going to be down another part is going to be up means based on your requirement you can develop the multiple microservice if you see here guys swiggy application swiggy applications contain thousands of uh, your um, uh, microservices why displaying the list of uh, menu is one uh, microservices search suppose just imagine search if search is not working they are not going to stop the entire application just imagine somehow search functionality is not working in this case they are going to create another microservice that is called another application that is for the search of a restaurant okay Sort of restaurant now in this case if sort is not going to work doesn't matter other things are working but in case of monolithic application what will happen guys the problem is if one thing got down the entire application going to be down if ui got failed logic also failed if logic got failed ui got failed nowadays guys you can see that all these big big application not getting downtime that is the only use only the use of the microservice without microservice or without the separating the application from different different application to different different chunks or different different service this is not going to be possible just imagine one one of it so you are developing one application large application okay if all the application is bind with one part tightly coupled to one part if anything got failed or anything got broken your entire application is going to be broken for that reason guys Facebook, Amazon, Swiggy, Zumato, how they're maintaining data? They're maintaining the data because they know that if they first they have to choose, okay, these are my application. In this application, I have these are the different, 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 different modules are there. Okay, display the based on the location, display the restaurant is one service. If you're going to click the one of the item, this is another service. If you're going to click on the uh, or search is another service L let me click on the offers another service if offer is not working doesn't matter people can able to still order the items right same to same if search is not working i can able to still order the items if the offer is not working i can still able to order the items if i going to click on help if the help is down then i can still able to do the order for that reason guys each and every big application they are going to develop the multiple different different microservice now that's the reason now we'll on inter we'll discuss about how the microservice because just imagine this is our entire app right this is our entire app in the entire app we are creating some different 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 sub app but in monolithic application everything is one but in the microservice everything is separate if one got down doesn't matter another one going to work is one got down another got down another going to work this is the way the microservices work now you understand we have divided our logic or our api or our microservice into multiple sub microservice but all the microservice we are going to do the same work just imagine same to same you know sign in service or suppose after you sign in you can able to see the list of orders if the list of order is not working you can able to still do the order right that's the reason in the application in the swiggy application we have hundreds of different 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 microservices are running who is doing their each and every work for search it's a different microservice for offer it's a different microservice siren is a different microservice everything is a different 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 microservice micro means 
is the part of main application, but it's a micro in nature. It's only do its own work. Means search don't know about what you order. Search don't know about what you did, what is the offer. Search only know that when you go and type something, it's going to give you search. That's search. It doesn't care about whatever your application, all these things. The developer who knows search, they're going to work. Just imagine why I'm talking all this, all these things. Suppose you are working on a search part. Are you, are you a developer? You, you are going to work on a search part. In the search part, you are going to only focus on your searching article. Suppose you know, suppose um, the elastic search, Amazon elastic search. Then you can develop this search part using the Amazon elastic search. AWS. Suppose you know manual list, suppose you are using a dot net, you are going to use dot net. Suppose you know the this one, suppose you are using the Python. Just imagine for the one application, we can develop the entire different, 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 different services using different, 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 different language. But if you go to monolithic application, everything is in one log. If you know dot net, you are going to develop in dot net. If you know the Java, you're going to develop in Java. Whatever you know, you can go into use the, that thing. But nowadays, in a company to develop one application, they're using multiple languages. Suppose you go to .NET, you are going to use .NET application. Because I'm good at AWS, I'm going to use AWS services. Someone going to go at Python, they're going to use Python. Someone go at Node.js, they're going to use the Node.js. There is no technology barrier for the microservices. But the things will be, we discuss all these things, but how to develop? things will be how to develop all these things whatever i'm saying that okay where you can develop the multiple application going to connect all these things is going to work all these things now how to develop guys okay, to develop all these things we require a certain programming you know that to develop anything in this world we require a certain programming for that reason we are going to use dot net core web api this dot net core web api is used to develop the microservice application okay but before going to .NET core application you have to know that what are the different different version of dotnet is available now to know that dotnet uh, is initial called dotnet framework right if you know is is used to develop the desktop application is used to develop the mobile uh, web application all lot all, all lot of things but due to demanding in the market they have discussed about they have introduced about dotnet core api so first understand okay dot net you know that dot net framework from the long back dot net was there but what is core why not dot net framework why core is there now let's understand the core part is you know that dot net is developed by microsoft right and you know that microsoft entire application is working on the windows only right you know that windows only because if you develop an application microsoft suppose you know dot net is going to only work on the windows part but nowadays you know that we have two another we have also another two ways available market one is mac os right another one is our linux but if you develop any application using dot net that cannot be done on top of mac or linux it cannot be done for that reason what happened now, Microsoft team develop a new framework that is called the Mono framework. Mono means this, 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 this one talking about. Mono framework means it's a framework which can be run both on Windows, Mac, and Linux. That's the reason we are talking about .NET Core. .NET Core, if you're developing the application, now there is no barrier of your OS. Previously, if you're developing any application using .NET framework, okay, .NET framework, that application is only going to run on your Windows machine. But nowadays, there is no barrier to run the .NET Core application. If you develop a .NET Core application, you can run on Mac, you can run on Linux. That is the way we can going to use the these things. Okay. Second part. Now we are going to use .NET Core Web API to develop the microservice. Second one, which language is going to be a .NET is a framework. Using that, we are going to develop the application. But which language are going to use? We are going to use the C has. C sharp language we are going to use to develop the application. Okay. Now you know that which technology is going to use. Third, is there a database going to use? Because if you see my diagram, with the database, there is no existence of application, right? 
then we can use two type of application you know that we have two type of uh, databases available one is rdms another one is no sql rdbms another one is called no sql you know that the rdms means relational database management system or it's a data store in the form of table and row like column row and column format and no sql is going to use the store data in key value format we'll discuss all these things now after we develop this one because these are the programming language we are going to use to develop the application and this is the basic things okay the basic things to start the developing the application we must have to know this thing okay now now guys let me go and give you some uh, another idea as i told we are going to develop the application looks like swiggy okay don't just forget about the ui part only focus about the api part api part being based on the location we are going to get the list of our restaurant right now to get the list of a restaurant we are not going to develop the application using the dotnet core but in this case guys okay just imagine if i going to log in without login i cannot order just imagine without login if i, I can go and uh, like just add this item after adding you can see that cart got checked out if you're going to check out it's going to ask me the login and sign up without this concept i cannot able to order the item now you can see that here we are talking about the concept of authentication without authentication we cannot go and do the order in the swiggy just imagine one thing if when you're going to add the item right when you're going to add the item when you're going to check out this cart is also another microservice everything you can see a functionality is a different 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 microservice okay if cart got down the entire application not going down in this case guys when we are developing an application right that time we have to decide which modules or which features we are make it microservice in this case we are going to design that way that i'm going to discuss when we're developing the application using the dotnet core we're going to discuss which part is a microservice which part is not a microservice how microservice uh, service is going to interact with each other we are going to discuss all these things but we have to think that first part is after you check out this is going to ask you these things this is called the authentication authorization now we are going to discuss the first main part of our application is authentication and authorization in this case we are going to learn about how to do the login okay login means guys login means guys suppose you are a user if you go to click on account login you can see that is asking your phone number now we're going to discuss about how to do the phone number login if you know that phone number login means it's going to ask you enter your mobile number you have to enter your mobile number then it's going to ask you the your otp once you enter the otp now it's going to authenticate once you authenticate just imagine this phone number everything is stored into your database right database now once you enter your username uh, your phone number here the communication go to server server is going to check a database once it's going to check a database now what happened is going to check the authentication now in this case we will going to understand how the authentication going to work phone number authentication email id authentication and social media authentication social media application guys suppose you are using the twitter you are using the facebook you are using google how can you using the all these things into your application okay means authentication means once you authentic authenticate once you log in then only you can able to see your orders until and unless if you don't enter anything if you don't authenticate that time you cannot able to see the item that's the reason we are going to focus the main part is authentication okay but guys understand if i'm going to say that okay go, just go and develop the swiggy application you, you will know that okay i have a swiggy application i have to enter the uh, area code then based on that I, I can get list of item here and if i'm going to click it here i can go the list of uh, product and i will do, uh, do the checkout and after checkout i'm going to log in i'll do all these things okay guys this requirement is called functional requirement okay now one project any project is going to develop into two part divided two part first is your functional requirement functional requirement functional requirement functional requirement suppose you are working in a company right 
company is going to tell that okay you have to work in this way then these are the modules you have to develop like whatever you go to develop right whatever clients requirement if the clients requirement what you developed by the client instruction that is called functional liquor fr means suppose you know that how this uh, project you need to work on this part that part this module that module that is called the functional requirement functional requirement can be vary based on the project to project just imagine if you are developing swiggy you need to you need to develop the application by the swiggy requirement suppose you are de developing the amazon you are developing the amazon way based on the project to project the requirement is going to be changed for that reason guys don't focus much more into the functional requirement but there is another part is there that is called non-functional requirement that is called nfr okay nfr guys okay. this is the key point you must have to know functional as i told if you go to based on the project functional requirement going to be changed doesn't matter which project you are going to work the functional requirement going to change different differently but if you understand what is a non-functional requirement the net understand as a developer you must have to know the non-functional requirement as i told here non-functional requirement like apart from the requirement what you are going to develop guys just imagine sometimes i'm going to click on the login suppose login got failed login is not working in this case the first thing is how to track application error as a developer you have to know that if any error is going to occur into application, you have to track the error. The second part is, okay, how to log that error. Track that, okay, write a code is going to track the, your error. Okay, this happening. But without logging that error, how we can go and use that? Just imagine you are a developer developing application. Some error occurred. You know that. But after you deploy, you don't have chance to access that server, right? In this case, how you can go and log that error? That is the first part. You have to understand the error logging. Right? Understand? The error logging is the first non-functional requirement you must have to know. Without that, how can you know that? Because once you deploy the application into the um, production, that time as a developer, you don't have any access to production server then that is the only way to track the error we have to track the error and logging that error second part most important part security is if you are developing one application right and you develop application the application is very less security is there now in this case you develop today tomorrow is someone going to hack that one right in this case we are going to learn how to implement the different different type of security using our dotnet core microservices that's the reason we're going to use the first widely used micro security it is called the token based authentication or you know that it is called the jwt right jwt and also going to, there is n number of different, different authentication guys that are available but in our course we are going to mostly focus on jw token based authentication or we are going to use the like basic authentication and we are going to use we are going to use the another there is n number of certificate authentication okay. guys there is no end of security we can use n number of security and in security is not about the authentication part in security also we can discuss about the injection part okay we're going to inject in the injection part injection means how to prevent the sql injection right that is the most part you have to know guys security is the most vital role into application without security there is no existence of api let me give you an example you develop one api and I got the uh, endpoint, the address of the API. I write a bot. That bot is going to 
run your API thousand times per second. Just write a loop, it's going to call your API thousand times. Just imagine that time how much resource is going to consume by your server. For that reason, we are going to use the security into our application. Without that, there is no existence of these things. Third, passing. Now I'm going to discuss about the performance optimization. Anyone can write a code. Are you a developer? If you are a learner, also you can write a code. But how you are going to improve the performance of your code? Which pattern of code you are going to write? For that reason, I'm going to introduce the caching mechanism. How you can go and implement the in-memory cache inside our dot and core, and how we are going to use the in-memory in memory cache, and we are going to learn an additional tool that is called the um, Redis cache. To learn how you can go and implement the Redis cache into our application. Okay, this is the things you have to understand. Third one, fourth, fourth one. Okay, now you got discuss about non-functional requirement. Then we're going to discuss about different things. How you can go and integrate your code into Git? How you can go and manage your code? That part also we're going to learn in the Git part. Fourth, Git part. Git is used for code management. Now we are going to use Azure DevOps. In Azure DevOps, we are going to learn about how we can go and do the project management. Because we are doing the real-time project. In the real-time project, we have to know that what is the project management tool. Because we are going to provide you for end-to-end -end of our application life cycle, project life cycle. Second one, we are going to Azure DevOps for project management. Same to same, we are going to use CI CD pipeline. As a developer, you must have to know how to use the continuous integration and continuous deployment. If you go, guys, any job in this market, the basic requirement is you must have to know CI CD pipeline. But if you're going as a dev .com developer, you must have to know that Azure DevOps, you must have to know. Without Azure DevOps, you cannot, because company are purely uh, dependent on Azure DevOps for their .NET application. For that reason, you must have to know Azure DevOps and also you know the CI-CD pipeline. Okay, build and deploy. Okay, now, third part. Now guys, we have N number of tools. We're going to learn about Postman. To check the API, all these things, we're going to check the Postman. Okay, and we're going to learn additional thing is called RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ. Okay, we're going to discuss about RabbitMQ for the messaging queue. Fine. There are things you must have to learn all these things. Fine. Rabbit MQ. Sorry. Rabbit MQ. Okay. Postman going to learn. Rabbit MQ going to learn. Now we are going to use the this error tracking use sentry. We are going to use the sentry to track all your errors. Errors and application performance. We are going to learn this sentry as a new tool. These are the tools which are required. Now, after you develop all the application, we are going to learn about Docker, how to deploy the application Docker, how the microservice, whatever microservice you develop, each and a microservice is going to deploy into Docker. Okay, this is a Docker Dockerization. Th then we're going to learn about SSL certificate. If you open any site, you can see that SSL is there. How you can enable a Docker as SSL? That is the things. Okay, twelve. We're going to learn about unit testing. We're going to learn about N, N, N unit test or MS test. We're going to use unit testing. That is the most important part. Without testing, there is no existence of application. Okay. Third, we are going to discuss about the load balancer, load balancing, or the application loading using the J meter. 14, we are going to discuss about the application real time analytics. We're going to use the Google Analytics integration for the UI side. How can go and how much time if you're going to take the take the response? All these things we're going to implement the real time analytics. Okay. Guys, okay, same to same, we are going to use more than 20 tools to achieve this kind of non-functional requirement.
you can learn the functional requirement everywhere but that's non functional requirement we are only going to focus in our case okay means if you are going to learn this course you, you are not only going to learn these three things this thing will be there dot net web api you will learn c sharp you also learn rdvs will also learn you can learn this one anywhere that doesn't matter but what we are going to provide you extra this is called the nfr non functional requirement can you trust me these things you will not get anywhere we plan our course in such a way that if you are also gap in your career also you can go and focus on this part you are a fresher also you can go know this one because as a developer we are all our developers right we are going to let you know that how the companies people are working that's the reason guys trust me this one no one going to focus because if you know development you can go and simply develop the login requirement just i going to tell you to develop this login page you can simply go and develop the login page right but if login got failed if login got security issue how you can go and track that that all this thing you can go and focus on the nfr part for that reason you can see that we have more than 20 different different tools we are using in our project and that is going to achieve your nfr requirement for that reason guys we are going to focus much more into all this part apart from this functional requirement we are going to focus on this part but these are the things are going to provide let me discuss about further things so as i told if you are going to start the microservice are going to develop .NET application we must have to know these things but do we need to know all these things no only thing i'm expecting you must have to know that any programming language any program language it may be c if you know c sharp then it's a all and good if you don't know c sharp at least you know what is class what is a function all these things at least you know if you know this programming then there is no worry about other part other part I, we are going to take care means to start the this course you have a requirement like you have to know the first one programming language at least you know any oops language operator language it may be anything it may be your java if you know c sharp if you know anything doesn't matter but at least know the oops language but in this our course c sharp was not included but for you the second part is we are going to include the c sharp into here we are going to tell you what are the new features is available in c sharp 10 because c sharp is developed day by day now the current version of a c sharp is c sharp 10 that is you must have to know that i'm going to overview how the what are the features of c sharp 10 you are going to use because if you are going to work in a company company always require latest technology for that reason you have to know that what is the features available c sharp 10 then we are going to use the dot net core web api 6.0 this is the latest version we are using okay dot and 3.1 also there dot net core 3.1 also there pipe also there but we are going to we are going to use the 6.0 version o plus okay. we are going to start with everything from the latest now the requirement will be you have to know the this one at least no one programming language because if you are going to discuss about c sharp that time we are not going to in depth of c sharp as i told we are going to discuss about features of c sharp what are the new features are introduced okay now then dot on web core 6. Point we are going to use and uh, database we are going to use the sql going to use sql fifth we are going to use the entity framework you go now if you don't know framework means it is the it's a orm tool which is going to use to connect with database that we're going to use the entity framework we'll learn about code fast approach and database face database of fast approach learn this thing and also going to learn about link queue what is language integrated query without link queue there is no existence of entity framework okay these are the things we are going to learn into our course apart from this seventh all non-functional requirement whatever i have discussed here right more than 20 tools then list of tools are there all we are going to discuss in this course one is you must have to start this course you must have to know this language apart from that i'm going to take care about all these things okay let's discuss about the duration 
a duration of this course is a project course right means you have to know the end to end of project the duration course it should be two months two months for the completion of all these things and after that i have 15 days is required from your side to do the mock interview okay two okay let me write, write this way two months is the entire project okay apart from that we have a 15 days for mock interview resume preparation and one to one doubt clearing and this is the after completion of two months you will get the 15 days time to we'll go to do the two mock interview with all of the it is one one hour mock interview for everyone that is a group interview actually not group group interview there i'm going to ask you question to all of you we're going to give the answer to be conversation best then I'm going to prepare resume, resume for your and after that one to one doubt clear i'm going to share my calendar link you are going to book the calendar and going to ask me what are the doubt you have in dot net that is the things okay now after that we have a timing at the timing we are going to start from every day nine o'clock morning 9 a.m to 10 a.m 10 a.m the morning okay now it will be weekdays now after the little bit course started we're going to start in the weekend that will depend upon the uh, like the course and depend upon the any workshop that will be there okay then last one will be the recordings and notes you will get all your notes every day after end of the class you get in in telegram and git and git team as we are distributing your note every day into all these things you are going to give a note up after end of the class we are going to commit the note you will get the note from a git as well as telegram okay same recordings the recordings means you will get your oh, you'll get your recording every day after end of the class you'll get a recording via google there's a google uh, link we are going to send google recording we are going to send you every day that is not sent to me automatically will be there you go and access that folder every day is available for you you can simply go and access your google drive and this is valid for and for like when suppose you register today and end of the course so course up to course is there after course two months will be there two months valid after two months of two months after two months valid after two months of the end of the course but throughout the course you can able to access anytime after that also you are going to give you the two months access to all the video you can go and watch that video okay and finally all our communication going to happen in telegram channel as well as you are going to create a github account for each and everyone We're going to see your code every day you will get your you will get your um, uh, like code you will get your code this code is free okay code is free for everyone lifetime you can go and access your code every time because we are going to get a private repo you can go and access your code all the time it doesn't matter you are in course or out of the course or course completed you can go and access your code all the time final course fee as this course fee is 8000 okay this is the 8000 and you have to pay for two because you have to pay to start the course but what i'm going to do now next week next week from uh this one from wednesday next batch okay next batch next batch is going to start from wednesday september november okay wait let me put it november 2nd november 2nd it's wednesday okay wednesday we are going to start the next batch wednesday join for one week free class okay we are going to continue the class on one week means next up to next uh, eight we are going to continue the class up to eight nine if anyone interested after that you like the course then you can go and do the register otherwise don't don't do the register we are going to only going to start from the second next is going to start if anyone interested please go and send a mail to gmail.com and whatever mail you receive you can reply on that mail 
okay then we are going to send you the uh, links of your this uh, new class starting point you can go and join there okay then just remember this date guys now november 2nd we are going to start the class at time 9 am to 10 am 9 o'clock morning and we're going to run the free class up to next one week and if anyone is interested you can simply reply your mail whatever mail you receive the received otherwise you can simply send the mail to sim technologies at the red gmail.com sir sorry to okay now guys this is all about today's things before we wind up today's session anyone any questions anything guys Sir, someone asked a question. Just a second, guys. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, there are any questions, guys? Hello? No. Someone asked the MBC. No, question, guys. Sir. This is purely web API. We are not going to show you the MBC, all these things. This is purely web API. Okay. And this is not about MBC and classic web page. This is the purely web API part. They are going to learn about web API, middleware the logic of the architecture all these things no mbc this is not mbc part this is purely into the dotnet core web api hello thank you sir because there is no no one is going to develop using the mbc nowadays this is totally mbc is obsolete not is there also but people are not using uh, mbc now all are using the microservice part due to that whatever the demand in the market based on that i have designed this course in that way that it's going to fit and you get the job quickly Okay, if you're going to include MBC, it will take much more time. For that reason, if you are interested to learn MBC, we can run the MBC course separately, but this course purely into .NET Core Web API. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Amit, you are saying something, right? Just, just, yes, just, yes. Okay. I'm saying one thing. So in this course, that tools that we have discussed, right? Like whatever second, tools guys. for uh, RapidMQ or Sentry, is there all free open source tools or is the, this are any license also involved? Because in later, if I am trying to practice in my home, it should not mm -hmm. block any of the licensing. No, no, that's the reason I just told whatever we are going to use, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. we are going to use, that these these are the these are the free tools as well as the paid tools are there. We are going to use free up to one extent. After that, is the, if you are using the advanced version, you can go for the paid one. And uh, yeah. for this microservice communication, we will be using the Rabbit MQ, uh, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, Rabbit MQ for messaging queue. Yeah. Okay. So you you will show us how to set up Rabbit MQ also, right? Yes, yes. I am going to create an account on the our. Uh, you can install local also. I can create a Rabbit MQ instance on the AWS. I have AWS account. Uh, I have paid account. I can go and show you how AWS uh, Rabbit MQ is there, and how you can go and create a. Queue management, how you can see the all these things, I can show you end to end. Whatever guys I have discussed here, I'm going to show you that that the thing end to end. That is my first priority. Because you have to learn the project, right? You are not going to learn the other things. What are the reason? These are tools basic required. And uh, okay. and and uh, so that means that you will be hosting this entire application onto onto AWS, right, sir? Yeah, it's, I'm going to host in Docker because I can. We can use the AWS or you can use the Heroku. Is there any free of one you can use? But I'm trying to host using our um, AWS, or you can use okay. because Azure is a little bit costly. The yes. Azure DevOps is a little bit costly. Due to that, we are going to we can do CI/CD pipeline everything in Azure DevOps, but the deployment mm -hmm. part we are going to do in the AWS because AWS, you know that Azure is a little bit costly as compared to AWS. Okay, sir. Fine, fine, sir. Okay. 